Twilight studied the map of the facility, scanning her eyes over the various symbols and passageways. Currently, they were in the final stretch of the hall, and judging by the scale at the bottom of the map, about a hundred feet to the last exit, a large storeroom. Chrysalis seemed to have fled, recently dealt a heavy blow. But if this awful experience had taught her anything, and she was not one to not learn a lesson, then the changeling would be back for more soon. Applejack knew this as well, and relished the chance to finally finish that monster. Their most recent battle with her gave them a new sense of confidence and hope. Dr. Antlion, walking beside the orange mare, felt apprehension concerning another inevitable engagement. Before she had used her magic, this time she didn't. What was going on? Maybe she was out of magic. Or maybe, just maybe. His thought process was cut off by a loud sound coming from behind. He readied his weapon. This is it, Applejack said, grinning. All right, every pony. Don't none of y'all hold back. It ends now. Rainbow Dash and Twilight nodded, while Fluttershy stood protecting or protected in the circle formed by the ponies. The Pegasus was already was ready to dress any wounds sustained, though hopefully, she wouldn't need to. Celestia flared her wings and her horn began to glow. The share pony retreated within the circle. The metal beams and ceiling tiles began to deform as Chrysalis pounded them with her legs. Roaring came from within the matrix above the ceiling. Lights flickered as she passed over them. Several volleys were shot of bullets and magic, and Chrysalis shrieked in pain. Several more went off, and again she cried. Or, so it seemed. In truth, Chrysalis, hidden in the ceiling, was never hit. Even so, she turned around, audibly retreating to whatever she had just come from. Now we did it. Now, let's get the hell out of here. We've bought some more time. Twilight celebrated. But wait, that was too easy. She didn't even show herself. And Lion objected. <clears throat> we probably hit her somewhere really vulnerable, like her heart, or something. Rainbow Dash shrugged. Twilight's right. We should move now. Doctor, as much as I agree with you, and I would love to run after it, the door's just right down this hall. We can order an airstrike or something. Applejack placed a hoof on his shoulder. It's too fast to catch. Under different circumstances, I'd say let's follow, but well, I don't want to put any pony's life at risk anymore. Let's go. The doctor knew she was right that it was best to just leave. Without a second thought, well, maybe two or three, he joined the rest as they proceeded to the storeroom. Crystals looked down the hall, watching the seven ponies walk away. Excellent, she thought. Her feign had worked. Had worked. Caught off guard, it would be even easier to snatch another meal. Silent as the still night, the black creature crept along the beams and quickly looked down on the group. Bearing her fangs, she lowered two long tentacles as fast as lightning and wrapped them around the wings of Rainbow Dash. Being drugged into the darkness, the cyan mare yelled out, Help! Every pony! Applejack turned around fast enough to see her friend disappear. She began her pursuit, the fire in her eyes enough to scare a manticore. Every pony else followed suit. Meanwhile, Chrysalis retreated into a small nook with her new prey. Still holding her by the wings, the changeling pressed Rainbow Dash up against a wall. Opening her mouth, about to devour the Pegasus, she saw her eyes filled, not with fear, but courage. A defiant expression covered her face, and she did not want her prey, did what her prey had never done before, talked back. So. You're gonna eat me? How original. Consume me like all the others. Like Pinkie Pie. And Rarity. Well, I'll warn you now. I'll go down fighting. You ugly fuckface. Hideous monster. 
good for nothing but eating yourself sick. Rainbow gave a smug smile and expected her end, but it didn't come, and the threatening eyes of Chrysalis began to water up. Dash became confused. You... You think I don't know that? L look at me. I am a terrible beast. A creature no pony wanted. I eat because I must. I do not want to. When I saw the pink one, she was so joyful looking. I felt horrible. More than ever. But the white one. She was special. Rainbow stared at her in disbelief. So beautiful. Her coat so pure. Her mane was so well groomed and a lovely purple. And her eyes, even filled with absolute fear, were still the prettiest shade of azure I had ever seen. Rainbow Dash began to tear up herself, thinking about her lost friends. Do you think I enjoy being a parasite? Do you think it pleases me to take form, form others, their emotions, to sustain my carnivorous, sinful form? Do you think I am proud when I leech the love and fear of ponies? I am the scum of the earth, created for death and destruction. I know what I am. And of all the terrible things to emerge from the world's bosom, I hate myself above all else. And do you think I'll pity you? Rainbow Dash said, venom spraying from her lips. No. Never. But know this. Before you depart from this life, I regret every death I have caused. I am truly sorry for your friends. I hate my actions. I, I always have. Far too many times I have slashed my own throat, or carved out my heart, praying for death. She leaned in closer to the Pegasus. But it never comes. Just eat me. I don't want lies to be the last thing I hear, Rainbow Dash said, dignified. They are not lies. Just then, two of her legs came up and morphed into hands. Rainbow Dash cringed at the sound of bone splitting and twisting, forming into grotesque black claws. Enzymes began to dissolve and reabsorb the keratinous shell over her chest, and then she plunged her black fingers into her sternum. What are you doing? The cyan pony cried out, showing you my conviction. Then, with immense strength, the changeling pulled apart her ribcage, snapping her bones and crying with intense pain as the broken ribs stabbed her lungs. Rainbow saw her chest cavity, noticed the huge, large, beating heart. She vicious, viciously resisted the urge to vomit. Chrysalis removed her hands from her chest, and then placed them over her heart, her own heart pounding at what happened next. Rainbow Dash reluctantly stared at Chrysalis. The black monster quickly grabbed her beating heart and yanked it from her cavity, her claws slicing the various blood vessels from it. The loudest, most ear-splitting screech the Pegasus would ever hear erupted from the monster's larynx. She held the steel-beating heart of cardiac muscle before Rainbow Dash. The Pegasus gazed in horror at the twisted autocardionomy, <clears throat> not noticing the spray of blood coming from Chrysalis's aorta. Then, heart in hand, the changeling crushed it, her body trembling. Almost immediately after, tendrils of muscles and nerves began to consolate into a new heart. Chrysalis's ribs lined back up together and started to fuse. Without a word, letting her actions speak for herself, she opened her mouth again. Rainbow looked at the various cracks on her shell, the raw flesh around her eyes. She was decaying, Rainbow thought, as she hatched a plan. It was a quick thought up one, with little thinking, but it had to work. 
still held by her wings, but nothing else. She folded up her strong legs and unleashed their stored energy like a spring. The powerful buck hit Chrysalis dead on the nose, causing much of her face flesh and shell to fall off, being only weakly held by what tissue wasn't dead. Rainbow saw her bare skull, the bone stained with blood. Chrysalis's next action was unintentional, a result of the pain she felt for her as her face literally fell off. The tentacles wrapped slightly, or tightly and jerked on the captive's wings, tearing them straight off. Rainbow screamed and yelped as she felt her beloved appendages being torn off her back. But now free, adrenaline coursed through her veins, and she made a full gallop back into the hall. Chrysalis managed to snag her leg for a second, making a deep gouge from the wingless Pegasus's right flank down to her... Knock? Hawk? <clears throat> Rainbow ignored the plane, still running as fast as she could. The changeling's jaw and face bones snapped back into place, and new flesh formed over them. She gave chase, roaring like a feral creature. Fluttershy was the first to spot Rainbow Dash, running into the hall. Joy turned to fear as the yellow pony flew up to embrace her friend when she began to yell. Run! Run away! The instructions were headed immediately as Chrysalis bellowed and burst out, pursuing Rainbow. Applejack was about to shoot when Rainbow strongly urged her not to. Fluttershy wondered why Rainbow Dash wasn't flying, but then she noticed she didn't have wings. Rainbow, you're... I mean... But she couldn't finish her sentence. Instead, in mid-flight, struggling to keep up with the fast mare, she got some gauze out and wrapped up the bloody stumps where her wings once were. In no time at all, the group reached the storeroom. The door was in sight, and panting, every pony sighed with relief. Fluttershy finished wrapping Rainbow's back and leg, and the blue pegasus cried out into her friend's mane. She... she took my wings. She lamented the loss of her favorite things. So deep was her mourning that she didn't notice Chrysalis come into the room. There it was, the beast of Lab 28. Her head was long and filled with teeth, her green eyes bearing down on the seven ponies. The form she chose to have resembled an insectoid like reptilian creature with four long legs and a spine tail ending in a club. The hands she previously spawned remained, jutting just above her powerful torso. Applejack and Antlion fired, but a magical force field deflected the shots. Damn! I knew she had magic! The doctor exclaimed. What do we do now? Get to the princess to... But the farm pony was cut off as Chrysalis's legs swung at her. Applejack! He threw himself at her, causing both of them to land outside the leg's reach. Thanks, Doc. Princess, y'all gotta use your magic. Of course. Celestia reared up on her two hind legs, her horn practically bursting with magical energy. Every pony else went further back into the room. Chrysalis stared down the white alicorn, and shapeshifted back to her base shape. Her horn also lit up, and the alicorn-type creature bared her teeth. I choose to fight you on your level, but you will not win, the creature boasted. We'll see about that. Celestia unleashed a blast at Chrysalis. Her shield absorbed the beam. Her eyes glowing, pure power flowed into her horn. The changeling fired, pushing the alicorn back several feet. Unfazed, Celestia stood back up and galloped towards Chrysalis. The two of them locked horns, trying to use magic and break the deadlock. For a time, the fight became a stalemate. Grunting, Celestia tried to intimidate her opponent. You can't beat me. Not again. I've beat you once. Before. And Celestia. What? I've been holding back. The princess's eyes widened as a magical impulse flashed from Chrysalis's horn to her own. Thrown back again, 
Celestia nevertheless got up, ready for round three. This time, it was a hoof fight, the two bashing each other with their legs. But Chrysalis was indeed holding back, toying with her final victim. For the changeling, physically, was much stronger than Celestia. A fact demonstrated when she grabbed Celestia by the horn and flung her across the room. The long instrument of Celestia's magic snapped, and she cried in pain after landing on the hard concrete. Twilight rushed over to help her mentor, even though she had done terrible things. Celestia was still the beloved teacher of the unicorn. It's okay, Twilight. I can do this. <clears throat> Struggling to get up, Celestia was intent on beating Chrysalis. No! The element of magic, awakened by the dire situation, felt raw magical power in her body. Her eyes began to glow, and she rushed Chrysalis. Twilight, don't! Celestia's words made no difference. Lavender one, you should listen to your teacher. Chrysalis began a similar magical charge, and galloped towards the filly. Each shot beams at one another, meeting in a large junction of magic. <clears throat> Both sides were surprised how much the other could resist, but Twilight eventually made headway. Chrysalis took notice, and shifted back into her large form, and swung her tail at the unicorn. Shaken from her trance, Twilight was knocked into a metal support beam, likely breaking several ribs. Celestia looked in disbelief, worrying what would happen next. She could not produce magic without a horn, <clears throat> and tried to run away. However, Chrysalis lashed out tentacles, and restrained every pony in the room, slamming Celestia hard into the ground, saliva dripping from her maw. Chrysalis struck out a sharp leg, and aimed it over the unicorn, alicorn. Celestia shook her head in futility. Chrysalis roared out like a dragon, declaring her kill. Then. She plunged her razor-sharp claw into the white pony's chest, just missing her heart. No! Twilight yelled, wrapped in a tentacle. She painfully looked as the princess gasped, blood, and cried. Every pony else was just as horrified. Their princess had been beaten and punished. And Lion noticed his gun on the ground and summoned what magic he had to levitate it up and fire. Chrysalis noticed him, and sent another tentacle to wrap around his horn. In one decisive flick, his horn was ripped from his skull, its nerve uprooted. Screaming at the burning sensation akin to being set on fire, Antlion dropped the gun. No pony will interfere. I have no quarrels with any of you. But I warn you, I will not be stopped in my final goal. The changeling declared. She then looked at Celestia and saw the alicorn was slipping into a catatonic state. Wake up! Two more tentacles came out, this time impaling themselves into Celestia's fetlocks. Gnashing her teeth, Celestia was certainly awoken. Chrysalis then sent a magical jolt of electricity down her tentacles, ensuring the alicorn would remain conscious. The creature then turned to the others. I promise you, when my revenge is complete, you may exact your justice upon me. I implore you, make me suffer. Pick the scales from my wings. Gouge out my eyes with your hooves. Rip my armor from my skin. And sear my bare flesh. Give me a prolong, prologue to the black flames of Tartarus. Applejack was shaking in pure rage. Let me go and I'll be sure to make that happen for you. Why are you doing this? Twilight yelled through her tears. Just let us go. Please. We meant no harm. Why did you have to kill all those ponies? They never did anything to you. Those pure, innocent souls were needed to make it so I would be able to persist. I have been biding my time, and now I have gathered enough magical energy to defeat a goddess once again. Those two ponies stopped my vengeance in Canterlot. Celestia is the cause of all my misfortune. And now, I'm going to do what I should have done in Canterlot. What? Twilight screamed. Enough talk, Applejack said, 
feverently beating away at the tentacle, trying to break free. I'm gonna send you back to whatever pit you crawl out of. Chrysalis's mouth curled into a smile, and she began to laugh maniacally. Her final descent into madness was complete. The result of her actions and regret. <laughs> oh no. You see, I never crawled from that hole. She looked down at Celestia. I was taken from it. Positioning another leg between Chrysalis's legs, the Yolicorn pleaded. No, no, please. Chrysalis whispered into her ear. Tell them. Please. Tell them. No, no, no. Then I shall. This creature you see before you was made in this laboratory, and you already know where they got their specimens. Well, I was no different, but I came from a different place. Where? Twilight hesitated to ask. Celestia! Jolting the alicorn again, Chrysalis used her hands to rip open Celestia's abdomen. Searing in pain, the princess endured the changeling sifting through her intestines and other visceral organs before grabbing her uterus. Chrysalis pulled out the organ, careful not to separate it from the body, but only display it. I was Celestia's fetus, taken from her womb before I committed the original sin. Why? Why was I abandoned? No pony could believe what they had just heard. Chrysalis was... Celestia's daughter? The princess could only whimper. Why? The only one strong enough would have been in a holocorn. Princess, is this true? Every word, purple one. Chrysalis then dug Twilight over to her. What are you going to do to her? Celestia inquired. Please, don't hurt her. Kill me. Oh, Celestia. You know I cannot kill you. No, but I can do something far worse. You had my children slaughtered. They all felt pain as they were being blown apart, or crushed, or buried, burned alive. But they cannot understand their pain. They felt it, but didn't know what it was. But I did. And I have felt what it is like to die a thousand times. I have felt flesh and limbs I never had being hacked off. You cannot possibly imagine the kind of pain. But I can try to show it to you. What does Twilight have to do with it, with this? The greatest pain is having your child die, and you cannot stop it. I will translate to this to you. This mare is like the daughter you never had. She threw down Twilight and snapped off her horn, so she couldn't use magic to stop her. Then, aiming for Twilight's leg, Chrysalis thrust her spike of a limb right between, behind her knee. And Twilight screamed, and it hurt every pony's ears. Celestia burst into tears. No! Please! Let her go! I am truly sorry, Twilight. You are the instrument for my revenge. Celestia, I am going to kill her. I am going to tear her limb from limb, pull the skin from her body, and draw her entrails. And you can do nothing but watch. Princess! Twilight called out, reaching for her mentor's hoof. But before I do, Celestia. Chrysalis shook as her emotions battled within her further damaging the already insane consciousness. What stallion had the misfortune of planting his seed inside your putrid womb? Celestia could say nothing. 
Chrysalis sent another shock into Celestia's forelegs. Answer me! Eos. I would have named you Eos. I... I... But... Equestria needed you far more than I did. I would have loved you with all my heart. But... If I would have known... That you would have suffered so much... Celestia trailed off. Dr. Feltuf and I would have raised you. I'm... I'm... So sorry. Please! Make me pay for my sins! Spare Twilight! Feltuf... Was... My... Chrysalis cried, her eyes streaming down tears. But those weren't tears of Selene. The ducks in her eyes were now decayed, and only blood came from her eyes. The stinging through hurt less than Celestia's words. Overcome with emotion, Chrysalis bellowed again, and twisted her leg, embedded in Twilight's knee. The lower half of her limb was wrenched off. The deformed alicorn spawn then grabbed the purple mare and prepared to rip off another leg, but her tentacle started to fall apart. Bits and pieces of her carapace were now falling off, hitting the ground. Chrysalis's eyes widened. No, not yet. I'm not done with you. But it was time. The decaying process was here. Dropping twilight, Chrysalis saw her other tentacles give way. The other ponies broke free and ran to get their weapons. But that was not necessary. The changeling vomited blood as her esophagus wall ruptured. Her skin flaked off, revealing sickly muscles and sinews. The air pressure pressed against her eyes, and they rapidly thinned. Uh, the rapidly thinning wall gave way, and her eyes imploded into her skull. Twilight limped away on her three legs, but Celestia was still impaled by Chrysalis's legs. The white alicorn watched the creature's stomach area open, and the skin no longer strong enough to contain the heavy organs. Her massive liver fell out, the gland splattering onto the floor. The mucous membrane of her stomach disappeared, and the stomach acid ate at the walls of the gut. Shrieking as she felt her own body digest, digest itself, Chrysalis then felt the paralyzing pain of her own bowels bursting with putrefaction gases and the intestinal bacteria making short work of her colon. Blood and excrement pastered the top of her abdominal cavity. Her ribs broke open, and the bones too porous to support her lungs. The bones, one by one, cracked and clanked to the floor, with a smaller left lung and the air sacs following suit. Her heart began to palpitate, and aneurysms popped up all over the thinning blood vessels of her body. First, the atria, then the ventricles burst, spraying blood all over the floor, especially on Celestia. The high blood pressure of her quickening heartbeat, combined with the decaying of her aorta, caused a giant artery to rupture. Her consciousness, consciousness began fading fast, and the pain intensified as more and or, more organs fell out or dissolved. Her skin was nearly completely gone, and her mandibles detached from her skull, hanging on only by her tongue. She looked at Celestia, or at least would have, if she had had any eyes, and roared. Her cries of pain only stopped when her larynx and right lung fell off. But by the time it was almost over, Chrysalis was little more than a spine and a couple of legs. Her brain tissue was next, and her balance organs leaked from her ears. Her palate broke, allowing a partitioned gray matter to funnel out. Her leg muscles then slithered off, and then her lifeless corpse collapsed to the ground. Celestia bawled, Chrysalis's leg still inside her chest, her uterus and intestine still exposed and covered in not only her blood, but also the blood, muscle, bone, skin, and entrails of her daughter.